Hello students and welcome to chapter number 11. In this chapter we will be discussing oral presentations and the different challenges and the different strategies that you would need to uh, employ so that your presentation uh, is uh, delivered as effectively as possible. As always, we begin with our roadmap for navigating through this chapter. So at the beginning, we will be talking about the planning stage for presentations. What steps do we need to take to prepare for the presentation? And then organizing it and how do we you know, put together our thoughts and how do we present our ideas in which order? And then planning team and online presentation. So that's kind of a special topic when it comes to presentations. Um, uh, not necessarily that your presentation is going to be delivered by you, only one individual. Sometimes this could be a team task. And sometimes this presentation is not delivered in person in the same room as, you know, the, your audience, but it, it might be presented online. So that's kind of a special case that we will also uh, discuss. And then uh, using visuals. So things like uh, graphs and bar charts and all types of visual aids, how can you use them? And what are the guidelines that you need to follow? And finally, the delivery of the presentations in terms of style, in terms of body language, etc. So let us start with, you know, planning our presentation. And one of the first things that you need to do for any type of communication that you will be using is determining the purpose. So what is the purpose of your presentation? Why are you creating this presentation? We have a number of different reasons uh, for, you know, delivering and creating a presentation. One of them is basically to report. So you want to just update, you want to just give some information to your audience. And that audience could be, uh, you know, your teammates, it could be your classmates, it could be your manager, it could be, you know, something during an event uh, or something else. So reporting is just one purpose where you simply need to deliver what's happening, the different, you know, uh, new things in, in a certain project or something. And another purpose is explaining. So this is where you are going to deliver and talk about detailed information. So this is when you are going to be more descriptive. So this is where you are going to explain and describe and justify things and, you know, uh, talking more about uh, certain topics, uh, typically about the how aspect. So how something is done. How did you, you know, write this report? How did you complete this task or a procedure, etc.? So that's explaining. And then uh, another purpose could be persuasion. So when you want to convince someone of something, when you want to, you know, get someone on board for a certain suggestion, for a certain, uh, you know, make, making them, you know, uh, convinced of your products or services so that they can buy it from you and your company. So persuading people, persuading an audience could be uh, done through a presentation as well. And finally, motivating. So this is when you simply want to give people an extra push. This is kind of a goodwill kind of presentation where it's just for, you know, inspiring others, just for, uh, you know, changing their mindsets and their attitudes towards a certain um, uh, task or towards a certain uh, aspect so that they take action. So we have a number of different purposes. Of course, when you determine the, you know, the purpose clearly of your presentation, now you would be you know, more effective when it comes to choosing how you design it and how you deliver it. When you are presenting to an international audience, to a group of people who are from different backgrounds, from different cultures, from a culture specifically that is different from yours, uh, there are, you know, certain things that you need to pay special attention to. We have discussed these in other and in previous chapters when we talked about culture, but it's always good to keep remembering these things. One of them at the very top is basically using simple and clear language. Remember, you are talking and you are presenting to people who, whose first language is not the same as yours. So uh, you need to make sure that you are using very clear and simple and straightforward language so that you avoid any misunderstanding. You, could, you, you need to also use a slow pace of delivery. 
Meaning, do not speak very quickly because otherwise the people are not going to understand you. You see, you need to speak slower so that everything is made clear to the people who are listening to you. At the same time, you, you don't want to sound condescending. What that means is that you don't want to sound like uh, you are dumbing things down for them and you look you know, uh, to them as inferiors or something. You need to keep being respectful. You also need to watch acronyms, euphemisms, humor, and gestures. What are acronyms? It's, though, uh, you know, it's those um, uh, special expressions where you basically shorten the name of a certain individual, of a certain institution, etc. So when you say things like J-U-C, this is an acronym. To you, J-U-C is Jubail University College. To your audience, the J-U-C could mean something else, or it, it could mean nothing to them. So instead of using acronyms when you are presenting to an international audience, use the full name. You also need to watch for euphemisms. What are euphemisms? We have seen those before. So these are, you know, other expressions that you use instead of the actual word to make it lighter. So instead of saying things like, uh, Mr. X died yesterday. You can say Mr. X passed away yesterday. So you kind of lighten the expression a little. The problem with this is that maybe those people do not speak English or English is not their first language. So they wouldn't understand what passed away mean. They would understand die. They wouldn't understand passed away. So you need to make sure that you don't use euphemisms too much or you try to explain it to them. And then also watch for humor. Sense of humor is different from one culture to another. What is funny to you might not be that funny to them, or it could be even worse, it could be offending. So you need to watch for humor. And also watch for gestures. We have seen in a previous chapter how you know certain gestures, uh, gestures mean different things in different cultures. So again, ensure that you do your homework and you don't use gestures that are offensive. Uh, another thing is that you need to check jargon with the host ahead of time. Uh, so jargon, uh, these are the you know special terms for a particular uh, field. So to us in the field of management, when you say operation, it's diff it means something different from when you say operation in uh, the medical field to doctors or when you say operation to people who are in the engineering field, because you know operation to them is re related to the plant. So you need to ensure that if you are going to use jargons, that you know the, the, the your audience understands them perfectly. Or maybe they could be provided with a list of jargons that you will be using if they are absolutely essential. If you are going to use them in the presentation, so that they know them ahead of time. You also could enlist someone to help translate. So in case that is needed, in case you absolutely, you know, uh, th there's a special need that maybe someone doesn't really, you know, have a very high level of English, for example, then in that case, you could use someone to help you translate. Uh, something that you need to pay attention to is gauging attention or and response. So you need to measure, you need to ensure that they are actually following you so that you're not, you know, just losing, losing them because of the language barrier or because of the cultural barrier. So throughout your uh, presentation, just try to ask, you know, follow, you know, kind of follow up questions, if you may, things like just to ensure that are you following me? Uh, is there anything that I need to explain before I move to the next point? And try to, you know, also look for, uh, you know, uh, uh, head nods and, you know, anything that indicates responsiveness. And finally, include several forms of visuals. So don't only use one style, don't only use one type, one form of visual aids. So use videos, use pictures, use graphs, use cartoons, any type of, you know, any type of visual that could help you get your point across. And again, the most effective kind of uh, method to use is when you use a combination, when you use a variety of things. When it comes to presentations, we have formal and informal delivery methods. 
it depends on you know this the 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 uh, formality of the situation and the seriousness of the situation etc so how much preparation you need before you deliver a presentation that's kind of the you know distinguishing factor here so when it comes to this continuum that we have uh, at the left hand side we have the more informal ways and we move towards the more formal delivery methods so at the very far end at the left very informal we have what is called impromptu so the impromptu delivery method this is when there was absolutely no planning no preparation absolutely nothing this was unrehearsed and unplanned at all when you uh, for example simply out of the blue out of the sudden your supervisor tells you okay just stand up in front of us and you know talk to us about your experience so far in the company you didn't you didn't plan it you didn't prepare for it you did absolutely nothing you just have to come up with the words as you go the you know as you move in the you know through the continuum you you go towards what is called the extemporaneous way so the extemporaneous way this is when you've had some idea you've had some idea about you know the, the the presentation or about the speech or about what you are going to say but you didn't have a, you know much preparation uh, so that's kind of the extemporaneous so uh, uh, way. So that's when, for example, you knew that maybe you would be asked in the meeting to talk about your experience in the company so far. So you have thought a little about what you would say in case you were asked to speak, and then you were surprised by, you know, um, uh, by having uh, uh, you selected as the speaker of the event. And then you move towards the, towards the more formal delivery methods. This is where you have a scripted presentation. So in this case, uh, you, have a, you have written down what you are going to say. You have a script. You have written down everything that you are going to say, and you are basically reading from that script. And then finally, the most formal delivery method, and that's when the, your speech or your presentation is memorized fully so that's when you've had a script of course and then you have practiced a lot and you have done a lot of preparation and you have memorized your entire presentation so that's in the most formal settings so you know it, there are a lot of uh, you know competitions and a lot of techniques to be used in order for you to you know, enhance your skills when it comes to delivering speeches and presentations without having much prep preparation. So things like the Toastmasters, you know, most of you have probably uh, heard about it. So that's kind of a club in which you are given some time to prepare a certain topic and then you are asked to stand in front of an audience and deliver uh, like a 30 minute speech or a 10 minute, uh, you know, uh, uh, participation. Uh, so how is that helpful it helps you become more prepared for uh, you know unplanned situations you would face these types of situations in the workplace where you are you know asked out of the blue to you know just stand in front of a group of people and say something so it's always better to uh, keep being prepared for such events And now moving to the next part of our chapter, and that is organizing the presentation. So how would we organize the ideas that we will be presenting based on what type of factors? So when it comes to the organization uh, of our presentation, like any type of communication, whether it's in writing, whether it's a report, whether it's a speech, for any communication piece, we have an opening, we have a body and we have an ending an opening this is where you introduce this is where you begin and you have the body this is where you you know talk about your actual solid ideas and then the ending where you simply conclude present your findings present your recommendations and just simply end on a on a positive note hopefully so to open a presentation to start a presentation, like the first thing you would say, the first thing you would do when you begin a presentation, there are, you know, a lot of creative ways to, to start your presentation or to start a meeting. And, uh, 
you know, you could use a quote, for example, from a famous or a well-known person. Like you could say, um, you know, um, Gandhi once said that, you know, blah, blah, blah. So the very first, first thing that you say when you start your presentation is you could quote a well-known person. This way you would kind of, you know, catch the attention of the people uh, of your audience at the very beginning. Another way, another creative way to, you know, capture the attention of your audience members is to ask a question. And sometimes, remember, we, we, we talked about rhetorical questions. We talked about, you know, imaginary th situations like that where, um, you know, what if you were given one billion dollars? What will you do with it? This is the first thing you say in your presentation. And then you begin, you know, from the very beginning, you've captured the attention of, of the audience. Another creative way is to present a hypothetical situation. To present a hypothetical situation. So what if, what if, okay, or imagine that you have become the CEO of Apple, what would you do? How would you improve Apple? What would you do to ensure that your employees are, you know, productive? So asking a question or presenting a hypothetical situation. Um, so it, it, these are all ways to begin a presentation in a good and strong way so that you keep your uh, audience members engaged. Another way is to relate an appropriate anecdote, like a story, joke, or personal experience. So when you, at the very beginning of the presentation, so that's kind of the first thing you say, is when you start telling a story about yourself, something of course that is relevant to the topic of the presentation, or when you tell a joke, or when you tell a, you know share a personal experience, that if your presentation is going to be, for example, about motivation, that you could share a story about how when you were a student five years ago at some place called JUC and you were struggling with a course called business communication and you, you know, took a, had a nice assignment about TED Talks and you were inspired and motivated to improve your language, for example. So that's kind of a personal experience, a story about yourself that is relevant to the topic of the presentation. You know, when you use such stories like that, people are going to relate. People are going to be more interested because they feel that you, they share a lot of things with you, that, you, that there are some common, you know, uh, factors between you and them. Um, something else that you could use to creatively open a presentation is giving a startling fact, a surprising fact. Like, for example, did you know that Saudi Arabia uh, is one of the three top country, countries in the world in wasting food. Something surprising, something that, you know, captures the attention of the people from the very beginning. They would be more interested in saying, in hearing what you have to say next. And finally, using a dramatic prop or visual. So, so for example, what we mean by a prop, like anything, like a tool, something that you use on the stage, for example, if you are on a stage. So when you use an empty chair, as the, uh, you know, as the, um, as the example goes on our slide here. So when you use a pen, when you use a mobile phone, for example, when you are holding a piece of paper, when you are, you know, anything that you use to deliver a point to, to, across. So when you hold, for example, a mobile phone and say, um, did you know that this was considered magic 50 years ago? You know, something to help you, you know, get the attention of your audience earlier on. So there are a lot of ways that you could use in order to have a creative opening for the presentation. It depends on how formal it is. It depends, of course, on the topic of the presentation. And it depends on what do you want to achieve? What do you want to achieve by mentioning this fact? So we have, um, you know, a number of different uh, creative ways that we have gone through. So these are the kind of a summary for all of those. So we have a quote and uh, we have a question, uh, situation, story, a surprising or startling fact, and finally, a visual. 
in this slide here we have one topic and so so what is the topic encouraging employees to use the company fitness center okay so that's our topic so how can we use all types of these creative openings to open this topic and here you can pause the video and just see how for each tool and each way uh, how was it used to introduce this topic and now the body of your presentation the body of your presentation how would you organize it you have to choose a logical sequence just like we talked about any writing piece just like we talked you know when we discussed reports that there are you know that there are possible uh, ways that you can follow to ensure that your uh, organization is logical it's it flows smoothly and it makes sense so one of the ways one of the ways that you could use to organize your presentation is by criteria is by criteria so for example if for example if you are going to deliver a presentation about a certain topic and you have certain factors that you are going to present so these are the criteria that you will be uh, uh, you know using so criteria number one criteria number two etc uh, you could also have a direct or an indirect sequence we have talked about direct and indirect plans for so many chapters so the direct plan this is when you for, talk present the idea first and then present the supporting points the indirect sequence this is when you present the you know the supporting points first and then present the idea uh, you have also uh, chronology so in a when you present your ideas in a chronological order what does that mean chronological order it means you know in in terms of how the events took place the first event and then the second event so what happened in july then what happened in the month after that and the month after that etc you could also use cause effect solution so we could organize your presentation in terms of the relationship between the different topics between the different slides between the different you know aspects that you are covering you know cause and effect this led to that and that led to something else etc you could also organize it in terms of importance so the most and major important factors can be presented at the beginning and then you leave the less important ones to the end and finally the elimination of alternatives the elimination of alternatives what that means is that you know you basically omit any uh, you know redundancies and you try to um, you know try to present your ideas in the presentation by you know going through each and every alternative and, and saying that this is cross this is not what we are going to do this is not what we're going to do and finally you present your solution so for example and if you if in your study in you are presenting uh, you know a, 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 a slide about uh, a, a, or a topic about what type of things we can do to improve online tests in blackboard for example okay so we have a number of different suggestions a number of different alternatives so you you go with you start explaining alternative number one and then after you explain it and then you say now this according to my study this is not this is to be eliminated this is not the answer and then you move on to the next alternative and then you explain it and then you say this is not actually what we are going to do and then you, you know you keep eliminating those alternatives until you arrive at the solution or at the conclusion and now the ending of the presentation just as strongly as you started and opened your presentation you need to also end uh, you know strong as well so uh, you how can you do you need to summarize the main points again you know like in English composition you you know you tell your audience what you are going to tell them that's your introduction that's the beginning the opening and then you tell them so that's the body and then you tell them what you told them so that's the ending or the conclusion so at the conclusion part you try to end as strongly as possible just you know just because you start strongly doesn't mean that you end uh, you know uh, that you don't end on a, on a on positive note so you summarize the main points that you introduced you add a personal appeal 
what that means is that you try to relate more to the audience. You try to show them that you and them share a lot of things, that you, there are many things in common, uh, so that they, they start you know, relating to you. And then also you could make a recommendation, make recommendations. So after you, you would see that you would see those in TED Talks. So they would after they have ended their 20 minute speech, they would summarize the entire thing. And then they would try to give you recommendations like things to do after you are done with this presentation. After this meeting is over, what I want you to do is this, this and that. And finally, discuss next steps. So that's kind of embedded. So what, what to do in the future, what to do next. So this is how you end your presentation on a strong and upbeat and positive note. And now we will introduce, uh, you know, this special topic of team and online presentations. This is kind of a, a very common way nowadays. Uh, I'm sure that in some of your courses here in JUC, you have been asked by your professors to deliver a presentation either online or uh, as, 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 as a team member. So there are different challenges because it's kind of a different case. So what are some of the things that you need to pay attention to in this case? When it comes to team presentations, one of the, just like we talked in, you know, group writing project, one of the challenges is that you don't want your product, you don't want your outcome, your report or your presentation or your essay to sound like it was prepared or written or done by more than one person. Even though you are truly more than one person, but you, you are delivering this as, a, as one unit. You are delivering this as a team. So it needs to sound and it needs to be, and it needs to look like it was designed, prepared, written, and delivered by one person. So you need to follow uh, you know, uh, the exact same structure and style throughout your presentation, throughout your report or essay. So you need to achieve coherence. So coherence is how strongly related each part to the other. You know, this slide should be relevant to the slide before it and should be extremely relevant to the one after it, etc. You don't want your PowerPoint slides, for example, to sound like as if it was cut off and then you start a new presentation because a new team member is, is presenting now. So you need to have a coherent presentation and look like it was prepared and given by one single person. That's the challenge there. You need to rehearse the presentation as it will be given. What that means is that practice, practice, practice. And don't just, you know, you don't need, you don't, if you, you are a team, you don't practice separately. You practice it as a team. So if Ahmed is going to deliver the first part and then Khaled is going to deliver the next part and then Noura is going to deliver the third part, you need to practice it like that. So we don't just at my own house and I'm just, I have rehearsed my part and I'm done with it. No, we need to sit together in the same room, you know, after the coronavirus ends, and then we need to rehearse it. If we are doing it online, then we open a Skype or a Zoom or whatever, and we practice it together so that in the same exact order that it will be presented, so that we know exactly how to, you know, transit. How do we, you know, move from one person to the next? We also need to determine how you will answer questions. Where will you stand? And, or sit and so on. So in case there was a question, who is going to answer? In case there was a question by the audience members, is it Ahmed, Khaled or Noura? Who's going to answer? Or it depends on the question. Is it related to Khaled's part, Noura's part? Or is it, are we going to assign a leader and this leader is going to, you know, determine who is going to answer that question? And also, we need to determine how we are going to sit, stand, or whatever. So we need to decide that we, we all need to agree on our clothing. We need to agree on if we are delivering this in a meeting room or in a classroom. So are we going to stand and sit next to the, or sit next to the, you know, to the, to, to the board, or are we going to, you know, and, and, and in which order? So Khaled first, then Ahmed first, or how exactly? So all of those details matter. It's a team presentation. Though you are more than one person, but still you need to appear 
that you are one unit and to appear like that, like that you need to agree and discuss and practice all of these little details now when it comes to online presentations you need to keep one thing in mind um, you could use the attention of your audience more quickly in an online setting so you need to keep it shorter so in a in an in-person presentation when you have the audience at the same room uh, you could do a lot of things to engage them you could you know shout you could throw something you could you know make a joke or you know do something to keep your audience more engaged but in a in an online presentation there are a lot of distractions a lot of distractions they could be playing with their mobile phones when you're not watching they could be you know using the uh, you know the web browser to search through the internet and look for something totally different so one of the th guidelines that you should follow when delivering an online presentation is try your best to make it short because you would lose your audience more quickly due to a lot of distractions and try to keep them engaged you, it, I mean, what that means is that it shouldn't be a one-way communication with only you speaking and them listening. If it's a live session, of course, this is a recorded session, so there is no way that you could, you know, interact with me uh, uh, instantaneously. But in a live session, you need to have some ways for feedback. You need to keep them engaged, like give kind of like a, a group exercise or a team exercise, any type of a way to keep your audience members engaged and then practice with the technology when you have to deliver a presentation or record a video online you need to ensure that you all the settings are you know set up uh, 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 sufficiently so what that means is that um, imagine that you are going to do a job interview uh, using Skype using Skype okay so you need to ensure that you have a nice looking room with a good background not not a lot of light but good sufficient lighting uh, uh, you need to make sure that your Wi-Fi connection or internet connection is working well your device's battery is charged you know how to use the Skype have you downloaded Skype or not do you need an account for it okay if if you are going to use mute do you know how to use that if you are going to share a presentation do you know how to do that so practice with the technology to ensure that everything is okay and that you don't find yourself in an embarrassing situation and finally plan a backup system so what if what if your wi-fi connection is lost do you have another way to connect to the internet quickly what if you know something happens with your device do you have uh, another laptop or an iPad or a phone or something else okay so you need to make sure that you have taken some precautions and now we have gotten to using visuals or visual aids in general so all of the different tools that you could use in your slides in your presentation to help you get your point across or to help you explain a certain concept or to or to simply engage your audience in a more effective way so how do we use visuals so one of the you know the the reasons why you use visuals is that you want to clarify your idea you want your point to become clearer you want your point to be you know better understood by the audience so we go back to our example from the previous slide so our topic here is encouraging employees to use the company fitness center so now we will see an example uh, a sample kind of slide presentation about how is this topic being presented and what how is the you know the the design of the slide being created so, so that it suits the purpose of the topic so here's the beginning slide or the title slide as you can see it's very simple you have the title you have the topic of the presentation at the center and then you have the um, name of the company or name of the presenter at the at the top so it's very simple not a lot of colors not a lot of information try to keep it simple and clear as long as it you know uh, achieves its purpose as long as it you know delivers a message clearly then it has uh, it, it can be deemed effective 
So here we have the what what is being referred to here as the main point slide. So that's kind of your first idea, your first major, most important central idea of the presentation. Uh, what if you want, you can pause the video here and try to, uh, uh, you know, determine what kind of opening is being used here. Remember, we go back to those previous uh, uh, creative openings. So how is the presenter here? Uh, trying to open his or her presentation. So here we have a main point slide. We have kind of a very big uh, font uh, a sentence here that presents the main idea. You have a picture here of a nice fellow who's an athletic person. It, you know, again, it's very simple. You don't have a lot of text. You don't have a lot of pictures. It's about being uh, 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 being clear. It's about delivering an idea. It's about making sure that the message is being received and understood well. So again, if you want, you can pause the video and just try to see how is everything fitting together. And now we have something here called the agenda slide. So the, the, um, the previous slide uh, the main idea slide, we had our very big major topic that we want our employees to use the fitness center that is uh, established by the company, that is made by the company. So now, you know, what are our agendas, like sort of our supporting points, the sub-ideas, the ideas that we will be discussing. So here, for example, we have agenda number one, or the first item of the agenda is the employee fitness center itself. Uh, where, uh, you know, you have uh, sub-ideas here, high-end options, uh, big payoffs, and convenient schedules. So what are the benefits, what are the, you know, advantages of using this fitness center of our company? It offers you high-end options, it offers you big payoffs like discounts on memberships, etc., and it also offers a convenient and flexible schedule. So, again, look at the slide design very simple just bullet points with one photo that is trying to keep the you know the audience engaged and uh, attentive now how to you know one tip that you could use to make your slides easier to follow is to use the uh, kind of like the what you see here at the at the bottom of these slides here so the left hand side here at the very bottom you have planning planning organizing team online visual and delivering right so in here it's kind of like your um, table of content but in a very condensed form so when you use something like this it makes your slides easier to follow you the 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 audience member and even you the presenter you become more clear about at which stage of the presentation you are. Am I at the beginning, at the end, or kind of in the middle? So that if, if your audience members ask you to go back to a previous slide, they can tell, please go back to the planning part or the team or online part. So when you use something like this, it makes it easier for both you and your audience. This is sometimes referred to as a slide tracker. A slide tracker where you can track in which slide or in which section of the presentation you are. So here's another way, another example of how you could use this slide tracker or how you could use any sort of tool to help you better uh, 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 follow the slide, especially for the audience. If you look at the bottom of the slide here, you have flexible options, right, highlighted in yellow. So it, it indicates, this highlight indicates that we are now talking about this uh, 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 subtopic or this sub-criteria or this sub-agenda. Okay, we are now talking about flexible options. And when you move to the next slide, now the next part is highlighted. So it indicates to both you and the audience that we are now, um, we have now moved to a different part of the slide, different part uh, or section of the presentation. And also when you, you know, the, again, another part is being highlighted here. So it indicates how you know, and, and the, the location, the nav when you are navigating through the presentation, in which part you are at the moment. So it's a good, nice tool to use when you are presenting, and it's not only helpful for the audience members, it's very helpful for you, the presenter, because you would, you know, link ideas and be able to better understand 
how to, you know, flow, how to, uh, you know, transit from one part to another. Now, here's a nice um, tip about, you know, using text and graphics. The rule of thumb here is that you don't want to use a lot of text. We don't want to see big, long paragraphs in a slide. So avoid also too much bulleted text. We said we don't want to you see a lot of text. We don't want to see long paragraphs. At the same time, we don't want to see 11, 12, 15 bullet points on one slide. So try if you have that those many bullet points, if you absolutely cannot omit or delete any of them, don't present them all at once in one slide. Divide them into four or five slides. Why not? Only present three, four, five bullet points maximum in one slide. And then uh, convert text into graphics if possible. Use what is called infographics, right? So instead of having to write, you know, 10 sentences about, uh, you know, the statistics of the company, that this is the number of employees in the human resources department, and this is the number of employees in the finance department, this is the number of engineers. When you write it down in text format, it's boring and it's not very aesthetically pleasing. It's going not it's not going to look very nice on a slide, but imagine if you convert that into a graphic, a, an infographic especially, then it's going to be much better in terms of following, much better and easier for the readers to understand. Also, avoid irrelevant photos and just goofy clip arts. We said use graphics, we said use photos, we said use visual aids, but don't just use them for the sake of using them. What that means is that don't just use a photo just to fill your slide with something. Your photos have to have a purpose. Your photos, your art, clip arts, your graphics, anything that you put on a slide must have a purpose. It needs to be linked to an idea. It needs to deliver and help you deliver your message and support your idea. So avoid putting unnecessary things and convert tables into charts. Uh, when you use a chart, things like bar charts, pie charts, line charts, etc., things that we have discussed previously in the chapter about reports, it makes, her, it, it makes it again easier for the readers, easier for the audience to better understand and grasp, uh, you know, the information on the chart rather than, you know, a plain table. Using videos is, again, very common in presentations nowadays, of course. Oftentimes, you would want to show a clip, you would want to show a video recording. It could be from YouTube, it could be from another source, uh, to, you know, show them, to show your audience an example or to better illustrate a point, etc. So, it, 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 is, it is actually a good tool to use because it helps you, you know, make your, uh, you know, encourage your audience to be more engaged and, you know, basically illustrate or explain a point or even to make an emotional appeal. Remember logos, pathos and ethos. So there was one of those modes that touched on emotions. So sometimes you want to show a video to help you become, uh, in, in, you know, more uh, to, to help you relate better to the audience by showing them something that they can emotionally uh, relate to. So integrate the video into the presentation. What that means is that you don't want to, if you have a video to show, you don't want your video file to be separately kept or saved somewhere else. You want it to be embedded into the presentation so that if when you want to show the video, you don't have to minimize PowerPoint and open a new uh, you know, your web browser or open the video player to show the video. Include the link or include the video. There are features in uh, PowerPoint where you can do that. Embed and, you know, uh, uh, combine the video with your PowerPoint, uh, 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 PowerPoint file. And also practice using the video in your presentation room. Why? Because you want to ensure that the audience members can see it clearly and can, you know, hear the audio clearly. So you want to practice with the speakers, you want to practice with how you pause and replay and how you stop. You want to ensure that the volume level is appropriate, etc. So again, preparation is key. One good idea is to think about your slides as handouts. 
so that it becomes more visually effective for your audience. Uh, if you look at the example that we have over here, we have a concept uh, in management called SWOT, S-W-O-T, Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. Now, some of those uh, uh, you know, are internal and some of those are external. Um, some of them represent advantages like strengths and opportunities. They present advantages for the company or for the project or for the team. And some of them present or are considered disadvantages like weaknesses and threats. These are disadvantages that you have to deal with. Uh, so instead of having five different slides, as you can see here on the left hand side, instead of having five different slides, now, all of them are combined in one nicely developed slide that captures the entire concept. So try to think of your presentation as a handout, as a reference that your audience members are going to use in order for them to come back to it later as a reference. So instead of thinking about your slides as simple ways that you will just you know, skip through and navigate through, Think of them as a reference that you will come back to later. Which ones would you, you know, which format would you rather go back to for better and quick understanding? Is it the ones on the left or the, the, the slide on the right? I would say the slide on the right is more effective as it makes you connect, connect all the different ideas and the different, you know, uh, 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 concepts uh, together. And finally, the last part in our presentation is the delivery. So that's, so far we have been talking about, you know, how to design the presentation, how to organize it, how to plan for it. But now uh, we will talk about how do you actually deliver it. So in terms of speaking, in terms of sitting in front and, you know, standing in front of an audience, etc. When it comes to practice, of course, practice is key. You need to keep practicing and practice was as, for as many times as possible. And do not practice, uh, you know, inactively. Be active when it comes to practicing. What that means is that don't do things just arbitrarily. No, practice your presentation as if, the, you know, the, the audience members are sitting in front of you. So practice the entirety of the presentation from the beginning to the end you know practice how you are going to stand how you are going to raise your voice or how you are going to lower it you know practice the entire you know segment from the beginning to the end and you, you know do the uh, like play the video if you have a video play do your joke even if it's an empty room you have to practice the presentation from the from a to z so use appropriate language, voice qualities, gestures, and posture. So we talked about, you know, language. We talked about, key, you know, key using appropriate, respectful uh, language. We talked about voice qualities before, right? We talked about how you raise your voice when you want to capture the attention of the audience. Or sometimes you want to lower your voice also to capture the attention of your audience members. Using hand gestures, facial expressions, body language, all of those are important as well. You don't want to sound, you know, to, 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 to be shown uh, like a stiff tree where you are just planted in one place in the room and you are not moving and you are not doing anything. You are going to sound and be, you are going to uh, be shown like a robot. And also practice posture. So how you stand. You need to stand upright, you need to keep your head high, and you need to, you know, uh, come off as a professional person. Speak in a conversational tone, but enhanced and slightly slower. So you need to, uh, you know, to, to better engage the audience. Instead of sounding like you are someone just delivering a lecture or someone delivering a speech, where you are just talking and you know bombarding your audience with information you want to sound more conversational so instead of being very very extremely formal you no know, keep it more 
uh, 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 conversational. So as if you are telling a story, as if you are, you know, making a conversation with your audience members. So things like asking questions, things like, you know, keeping your uh, audience members engaged, engaged and etc. There is a very interesting concept when it comes to communication and presentation called storytelling. So it's not just telling a story, it's how you can, you know, deliver any message with the concept of storytelling. I would advise you to go online and search the concept of storytelling and you would be surprised with how storytelling can dramatically improve the, uh, uh, you know, effectiveness of your presentation speech or whatever it is that you're trying to deliver. There are numerous and plenty of courses available online where you can be exposed to, you know, a, a lot of information about storytelling and how it can be used. And finally, use appropriate gestures in a way that feels natural. So that, you know, you hand gestures especially, sometimes people go a little extreme. Extreme in, in, the, in the sense that they use a lot of hand gestures where their hands are constantly moving at, to the point where it comes distracting and annoying. Or they could, and the other extreme is not using hand gestures at all. And in this case, again, it can be a little annoying or distracting because you, you, you feel that the person is not being uh, natural, that, you know, something is a little, something bothers you when a person is just standing hands down and, you know, not moving his body or her body at all. I mean, unless they have a medical condition, uh, that's that's a different story but when they are when they are stiff like that it indicates that they are very anxious and worried and their anxiousness and uh, you know worrisome basically transfers to the audience so you become uh, more worried and anxious yourself as an audience member Again, we come back to professional appearance. You need to dress appropriately in comfortable business attire. So dress professionally. Remember, this is business communication. So you need to look like a professional. And when we talk about our own environment here in the kingdom, two different types of clothing, two different attires, uh, dress styles are considered appropriate. It's either the you know formal traditional Saudi style with for men, it's with thobe and ghutra and shimag and iqal, etc. Or it could be the Western style with long sleeved shirts and formal trousers and um, and shoes. So, and for for women, it's uh, it's a little different, uh, you know, because they would be most likely wearing abaya. But again, the the the, the colors of the abaya, the style of the abaya, all of those are uh, um, are are to be you know, thought of as well. So look professional, dress appropriately, avoid, you know, um, uh, avoid flashy colors, uh, whether it's makeup or whether it's, you know, your clothes, don't wear very, you know, um, unusual colors like, you know, pink or yellow, you know, things that might be a little distracting for the audience. Maintain eye contact, of course. And you have to remember that this applies to both online and in-person presentations. How do you maintain eye contact when it comes to online presentations? Keep your eyes on the camera. Your audience is, you know, going to reach you and keep, keep eye contact with you through the camera. So try your best not to look down, but look and, you know, not to look at the monitor or at the screen, but keep your eye level at the camera so that you you give a feeling that you are, uh, you know, engaged uh, with your audience. And finally, remain calm and take time to regroup if you lose your place. What that means is that it's always better to take a very short break, even if it's for 30 seconds or two minutes. If you feel that you are, you know, panicking or if you feel that you have, you are now lost, it's not embarrassing at all. There's no shame in taking a few seconds or even if it comes to it, a few minutes to regather yourself and, you know, regroup and, you know, rethink about, you know, where, what, what you have done so far in the presentation and what's next. It's very acceptable if you say, 
uh, okay, I'll just take a few minutes to, you know, gather my thoughts and you can consider it a break for your audience. Why not? There's no shame in this at all, as long as you handle it professionally. And the last thing that we will talk about is speech anxiety. So how do you overcome speech anxiety? When it's, it's, it, it is an anxious situation. It, it's, a, it's a situation that makes people nervous. When you have to, uh, you know, uh, stand in front of a group of strangers and talk about things and, you know, and sometimes they will be asking questions and be, uh, and you will be interrupted. So it is a nerve wracking situation, honestly, but you can do a lot to overcome this issue. How? By over preparing. Yes, do prepare a lot, over prepare. So pre do not practice only once or twice. Practice as many times as you can, 50 times if possible, 100 times if, if you can, if you have the time for it. Why not? And do not just, you know, make a, a dry run that is just about, just for the sake of making one. No, you, as I mentioned in a previous slide, you have to practice the presentation exactly uh, like you will present it. So within this, if possible, in the same room, and you play all the videos, play all the clips, and you know make all the jokes, and do all the hand gestures to see how this looks. And it would be a good idea also to record yourself when you are practicing, to see that maybe I'm using my hand too much. You, you don't notice this sometimes. So record yourself. If you, if you cannot practice in front of others, then practice in front of a mirror or even record yourself. Use positive imagery. So, you know, what that means is that you need to kind of, you know, motivate yourself. Motivate yourself by keeping positive thoughts. And try to imagine positive things so that your anxiety level goes down. So imagine positive situations, things that you like, things that keep you calm, things that keep your thoughts away from this very, uh, you know, uh, anxious and nerve wracking situation. You also need to recognize that you have something important to say. So you have to remind yourself that what you are saying in this presentation, what you are delivering here is something of value. So when you keep reminding yourself that this is something that is important, then you would overcome this challenge and you would, you know, push yourself into uh, delivering it in a way that is effective. And finally, relax your body and breathe deeply. So try to avoid those, you know, uh, signals of anxiety, uh, things like, you know, crossing arms or, you know, uh, constantly shaking your uh, legs or hands or, th you know, things like that. And it, even though it sounds something that you do automatically, you know, taking, t t taking breaths and breathing, but sometimes you have to practice it with awareness. So we breathe automatically, right? It's kind of an unconscious thing that we do. Uh, it's a bodily function, but practice it with awareness. So imagine, you know, try to visualize the air that you breathe coming inside your lungs when you are inhaling and try to imagine and visualize the air as you breathe it out and exhale, uh, you know, exhale and you know how the, the air comes out of your lungs and how, you know, when you, when you become more aware like that, this is kind of like meditation, right? So it helps relaxes you. It helps relaxes your thoughts. You are thinking a million things at, at, at a time. So when you do things, when you breathe like that with awareness and with calmness, you become more relaxed and hopefully overcome whatever anxiety you have and your presentation is going to be a total success. Thank you so much for uh, watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.